Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada. Honorable Dr. Clarice Modest Curran, Minister of Tourism and Civil Aviation. Senator Honorable Norlan Cox, Minister of Infrastructure, Development, Public Utilities, Transport and Implementation. Honorable Peter David, Minister of Agriculture, Forestry, Lands and Labor. Honorable Nicholas Steele, Minister of Health and Social Security. Senator Judd Cadet, Mr. Leo Garbutt, President of the Grenada Hotel and Tourism Association. Mr. Barry Collymore, Chairman of the Grenada Tourism Authority. Mr. Nagib Sahiris, owner of Silver Sands. Mr. Mark Scott, CEO of JDC. Ms. Narelle McDougall, General Manager of Silver Sands. Specially invited guests, fellow colleagues of Silver Sands, members of the media, a very pleasant good morning. My name is Francine Stewart. I am the Director of Sales and Marketing for Silver Sands and your master slash mistress, whichever one you prefer, I was told this morning it should be chair of the ceremony today. It is with honor to welcome everyone to this very special event, the groundbreaking ceremony of our second project, The Beach House by Silver Sands. I now invite Ms. Karen Brown, Human Resource Director for Silver Sands, to lead us with an opening prayer. Karen. Thank you, good morning everyone. Please stand with me for prayer. Oh righteous and heavenly Father, this morning we give you thanks. We give you thanks for bringing us here safely. Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity to witness this ceremony lord father we know that in these very challenging times to be able to witness the groundbreaking of this our beach house by silver sands project is uh, is just a blessing and so we thank you lord father we pray that this project will be executed well we pray for the project managers we pray for every contractor every supplier father have your way in this project lord cover it by your grace father we thank you for our leaders this morning we thank you that you continue to bless them with wisdom and courage as they continue to lead us forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Karen. I would like to believe that most of you here may know how and why the story began with the visit of our Mr. Sahiris to our shores. Today, it is hard to believe that when he first visited Grenada in 2013, by a special invitation of a close dear friend of his, Mr. Danny Fakri, hotel business was not really part of his then current investments and portfolio. However, in 24 hours, he fell in love with Grenada, not hard to do, and immediately decided that he wanted to be part of this amazing island and what it can offer to visitors. During that exact one day he was here, he spotted a green vacant field while taking a walk up on Granans Beach from where he was staying. Five years later, Silver Sands Grenada was born, a luxury modern chic resort and as a Grenadian, a resort that I am proud to be part of and as a member of the executive team. Today, the story continues, but with a new chapter, the groundbreaking of yet another hotel development for us. This location in its previous life, a place where some or many of us or all of us would have either dined or was part of a special occasion. I know I have a good few many, including my 40th birthday. Therefore, today, I am so excited that Mr. Sahiris continues to invest in now his home with more developments of this nature. So it is with pleasure and honor I invite and welcome our Nagib Sahiris, owner of Silver Sands, to tell you all about Beach House by Silver Sands.
thank you very much, and thank you for your confession about age, because <laughs> women usually are very careful about that. <laughs> um, so what I try to do always when I build a hotel is that when you walk on the beach that you don't see it. So I don't know if you, any of you have walked in front of Silver Sands. Uh, you walk, you hardly see it because it, uh, it integrates into the environment and it has a look between, I mean, Silver Sands uh, is between green and brown. So the roofs are green and we lose a lot of brown wood and glass. So actually when you walk, you don't see the hotel. It's not offensive because the last thing you want to do is to come to a beautiful place like this and destroy the nature. And that's why when you look at the design of uh, Beach uh, House here, first we always keep the names for historical reasons. So Silver Sands was called Silver Sands and Beach House was called Beach House. So we try to keep the memory uh, like a history going on, you know, and not continue. But if you look here, you look, you think it's about tents. We couldn't do it all in a tent because we want to give comfort to the people who stay here. But the whole concept is looking like tents on the beach. So it gives you the feel that it's light and easy. I hope it's going to be cheaper than Silver Sands, so the affordability. <laughs> because we want to widen uh, the availability to uh, all sorts of people, not just the, the rich. And um, so the hotel is around 30 rooms as a first phase. We are negotiating now uh, of expansion, which we have three uh, options of buying land. We are trying to increase the plot so we can do the second phase, more rooms, because hotels are managed better the more the rooms, you know. Even in Silver Sands, we have plans to add another 36 rooms. The permits and the design are there. We're just waiting for this horrible disease that has put so much misery and agony in all of us, including wearing this silly thing we have to wear and hardly breathe through it, you know. So I hope with the vaccination now, it's finally we're going to see lights at the end of the tunnel. I urge everybody to vaccinate. Don't waste your time thinking, you know, around, around one, one billion people in the whole world has already taken the vaccine. I took it. My parents are 90s. They took it. There is nothing. And they weighed between the danger of dying or, or just getting some fever or some such. This is ridiculous. And wasting time on this will only hold the economy. Many people are... We, we, are, we are lucky in Silver Sands because my employees are still there and they still have their homes and their jobs, but it has been even painful for me because, you know, it's all coming from the pocket. We haven't made any money since then, you know, but we, we believe in, in this country, believe in the people here. They deserve the best. The people here, as, as I'm, I keep on t saying that, but because I sometimes feel that you people don't know how nice you are. So you need an outsider, which I'm not anymore, but to tell you, you know, it's like a, an amazing feature here of the people, how they are, you know. And I've made so many friends in a very short time here. I've started to come three, four times a year, coming up from once a year, you know. So the hotel will also have a restaurant, so we want to keep it not like this. It should, should be a bit better than this, because I had also my complaints on the old beach house or restaurant, you know. And it should look very nice and hopefully not cost as much, you know. So uh, I would hope that the contractors will have some mercy with us this time, uh, if they're here. And um, it also will have a nice spa. And as I said, it has a lot of room of expansion, so we, uh, we hope we can double the capacity to 60 rooms, then it's a real hotel. Uh, this is the, the, the second hotel. We have plans now for a second Silver Sands on Mount Cinnamon. The designs are in process now. We also have plans for the Riviera, but this one should be a four-star hotel because we don't want to be classified as only providing for the rich, as I said. Even this one would be a bit cheaper. And we have uh, big plans for uh, Port Louis. And it needs, uh, it needs a lot of money that I don't have right now. But <laughs> somehow I believe in God is going to reward my good doing and will send the money too. So, <laughs> so please, God, I never ask you for money. But I, I, I made a vow that I will never pray except for health. So I've never violated. So take this as a joke. You know? <laughs> Um, and um, even if we don't get it, we'll find a way to get it, you know, we just need to do it. But if we do all what we want to do, we, because also in, in Port Louis, 
we uh, we are now discussing with the partners of Camper and I mean most of you even the PM doesn't know that so I'm telling him now <laughs> we're discussing with the Camper and Nichols and the Chinese uh, to do something together to promote the Port Louis area so we're putting some assets together and we have our own plans if they don't come through so to promote that area as a new entertainment spot plus add two hotels also there including the hotel which was on the top and we'll name it the same thing because of the Marlon Brando movie you know so we want to keep the legacy if we do all that then we've added like 500 rooms to Grenada from the current 1000 it's a 50% upside you know so uh, The, the fact that uh, Six Sense is also coming and Kimpton, after a 10 years journey, seems near the final line, but I, I am not so sure, but I hope that it will happen too. So we will have a big uh, draw and, and kill this argument by airlines that we can't come because the number of rooms are too little, you know. With yesterday was an amazing, uh, I'm very happy that I had the... The, the courage and even it's difficult time and we don't have the financial resources as much as we used to before Corona that we did the hospitality school with uh, Cornell as I made the joke yesterday I repeat it again I thought he would never make it so I never have to pay but he convinced Cornell to come <laughs> so this was my condition <laughs> so unfortunately I have to put the money now but it's a great thing because it will also give we, we have a shortage in manpower in terms of uh, trained manpower. So, as I said, in Silver Sands, the people are just amazing. Everybody working there. I cannot give them any more advice. They are actually far uh, advanced. But what we need now for five hotels, we need uh, 1,000 people more. You know, I mean, this this small hotel here will require 100 people, 100 new jobs. So, if you keep in taking people without training them, without giving them a chance to be well trained and expect the tourist that comes, he won't have a lot of uh, patience if something is not working and like that, you know. And the last thing I hope that uh, if I want to talk to the government, privatize the airport, give it to the private sector. We definitely can do a better job, you know, and uh, <laughs> because the only thing we will make sure is that when a tourist arrives, in two minutes he's outside. This, this we can do. Uh, we will also make sure that uh, there is comfort, there is ease. There's, we will fire anybody that will not meet the tourist with a smile, you know, and welcome him to give him comfort that this country, because you, you don't portray the friendliness of the people if you are, you know, acting as a, as a, as a typical uh, uh, civil servant. So, but I think it's not a bad idea to think about... <laughs> Sorry that I'm so uh, outspoken, but... <laughs> Uh, uh, I've known the PM to accept uh, hearing bad news and not just good news, so I, I try to be only good news bearer all the time, but sometimes, you know. But if we do that, then we can even create a lot of services at the airport. We can improve the catering, we can, we can have more planes coming in, we can make it easier for airlines to open up and so on, because there's always a difference between private and public sector. You know. So I hope I didn't offend anybody, I didn't break any glass. In my country, they never let me talk because if I talk, then th too many problems happen. But <laughs> <laughs> so I leave you on a good note, and thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And I have to say, with all that good news, it's simply overwhelming because, as I said earlier, I'm an executive member of the Silver Sands team. And 30 years ago, we didn't have this. We didn't have the belief in our forefathers to prepare our future, to prepare the next generation to come for what is about to come. A thousand persons need to be employed. Projects um, that are coming. So as a Grenadian again, thank you for believing in us. Thank you for bringing your money to us. <laughs> um, but I pray for good health that we continue and we're able to see these projects come to fruition and we are all stand to benefit. I would now like to invite our Honorable Minister of Tourism and Civil Aviation, Dr. Clarice modest Cohen, to say a few words. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, and a good day to all. I just would crave your indulgence to recognize the Naramid 
uh, Prime Minister, Dr. Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, um, a number of my colleague ministers, Minister Cox with responsibility for infrastructure and a number of other things, energy and so on, Minister David, uh, Minister for Agriculture and Labor, um, Minister for Health, so important that health and the minister is here with us and health is so important to us. Um, also, our former minister and advisor to the prime minister at this time, um, Sister Otwe Noel. Um, uh, permit me to also single out former minister for tourism um, and civil aviation and now uh, advisor to the minister, on, uh, um, Sister Brenda Hood. President of GHTA and all members of GHTA. And let me just um, greet everyone in the tourism industry. I see persons from all different aspects of the industry that make our industry what it is. And other specially invited guests, good day to you. Um, following up on, on what our dear friend, Mr. Soiri said, um, I hope there's work after you, you're done with us, sir. Um, quality and excellence in, at, at, at the hotels and the staff are doing it right and you don't need to tell them anything. And privatizing the airport, there might not be any need for a Ministry of Tourism, but let's see what happens. So if the minister is thrown out, maybe somebody can consider me for a job. Let's see. <laughs> let's see what happens. I, I, I also, so as not to forget, I want to start with something he said to when he spoke about the vaccines brothers and sisters we cannot get our livelihoods back we cannot get the life the engine back in this country if we do not get vaccinated persons have the naysayers have some negatives to say about it and i keep asking what is what are the other options that we have now what are the choices that we're offering the vaccine has proven itself to save lives, to minimize persons from getting the infection. It has certainly decreased the infection rate in the countries that have a good um, per, a number of persons vaccinated. And every country, based on your population, you have a different um, critical mass to meet. Um, it has proven itself that if persons do get the disease, then they have it, either have it milder and they do not need all of this respirators and all of these things that has been needed now and it saves lives and it brings back business it brings back the economy to our country um people are talking about passports uh, vaccine passports and a number of things and more and more we're hearing different entities saying that you cannot travel or sometime in the near future persons will not be able to travel if they're not vaccinated if we're telling persons that you if to come into Grenada, you have to be vaccinated. If we're working with them and we're going to interact with them, then we need to be vaccinated. I uh, understand that persons may have some misgivings. It is only natural. This is new to all of us, and we're learning about it. But there are some facts that have been demonstrated. Let's deal with the facts and not the rumor mongering about, about the COVID. And also, if you have any misgivings, any doubts that need to be clarified, then talk to the minister before he leaves. I'm sure he can set up the, the stage, the platform, so that um, explanations can be given, so that you have an understanding. I'm not asking people to do it blindly, but I think for tourism to come back, we must talk vaccine. The, 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 to operate, the, the, um, sorry, the cruise ships are talking about it. The airlines are talking about it. Grenada has to talk about it. I don't think that there's a choice. I think the best shot we have now is that shot in the arm, and I can't wait to have my second shot. So I hope that we can all start thinking about it in a more serious light and see what we could do. So my dear brothers and sisters, yesterday we celebrate the launch of WISH, West Indies School of Hospitality. It was a great event, and um, it's, it sent strong messages to us that the tourism industry is alive and well. It hasn't started to kick yet, but we're getting there. 
And with what is happening today, I think the kick has started um, with, with what we heard from um, Brother Soriri. So um, I, I really look forward to, to more things happening. But even apart from this, we had the launch of that project with range developers at, um, at La Suggest in St. David's. As said before me, Kimtum Kawana Bay is going full speed ahead. Um, we have the project at, at um, Livera. And a number of smaller ones are um, either being um, renovated, updated, upgraded, or built from, from start. So the industry is not dead. It's a bit dormant sleeping a bit, but a lot is happening behind the scenes. And today, with this beach house facility, what does it mean for us? A number of things. S the setting and the maintaining of a trend. The trend has been set with um, Silver Sands, and we see the trend is going to continue as we look at the photos and we hear the promise from Mr. Sawiri. Um, so that trend is there. Um, the quality. This was also spoken about. We've seen it with Silver Sands. And um, we expect this to be, if anything, better than Silver Sands. So there is some room for competition. Service. Excellence of service. That is always necessary. And again, Silver Sands has shown that. Um, but I want to say, brothers and sisters, that some of these qualities, or all of these qualities, are not new. They exist in Grenada already. Um, what we need to do is to take it to different levels. Grenada can boast of these many attributes, and many facilities in Grenada have been recognized regionally and globally for having achieved these standards. I want to talk about our dear Spice Island Beach Resort that has been recognized and awarded so many times I've lost count for excellence in just about every area. Um, the president of, of GHTA, Mr. Leo Garbat, and Calabash, you have done quite a lot and you have been awarded many times. Um, we have others, Koyaba and so on. So excellence is not new to us. We just do not have enough of it and we cannot wait to see what this facility will bring to us as well as the other facilities that are under construction. And to add to that, with our wish, School of Hospitality, we expect to see a lot more of that. Our safety and our natural assets add to the attraction for all of these facilities. We ask ourselves, why is Range Developer coming here? Why is Mr. Soriri coming? He's built a, a Silver Sands. He's building another one. And he has said it himself. I couldn't have said it better. The hospitality, the goodness of our people is of paramount importance. But the safety of this country also is something that beckons investors to come to our dear island. And, and, and the hospitality, these are all huge contributors to our attractions. But I just want to take a few minutes to speak of Roomstock. Roomstock, brothers and sisters, is a major, major factor in negotiating for flights to come to this destination, to our country. And I'll just give you some figures. I did some quick checks with some of our neighboring islands. I won't call names because today this is about Grenada, but we need a comparison. So one, one of the islands I got 3,700, another one 6,600, another one 5,000 plus, and Grenada 2,000 and a little bit. I don't need to say anything more, do I? The need for room stock is very obvious. You ne we need that as a leverage to bring more flights into Grenada, to bring more variety of flights into Grenada, to bring people on those flights. Planes, airlines will not fly if they're not full, and we don't want to see. We've, during the COVID, we've had flights coming in with a few people, but we hope that this will soon be a thing of the past, and we'll see full flights coming into Grenada. High demand, direct flights from whichever destination, rather than having to share because we cannot attract more. And room stock is a major, major issue. Um, Mr. Soriri, I don't know where I got 500 from. Maybe it was in my dream, because this is 30. But with all that you have said, I expect some, some time, at some point in time, we will get close to that or above it. For the moment, we, we appreciate 
this additional uh, addition of 30 quality rooms to our room stock. We appreciate that. Um, our chairman of GTA would tell you that in recent discussions, and we have not been sleeping, although the industry has not, much has not been happening, we have been doing a lot, looking at our protocols, how we can improve it, how we can attract people, even as we wear our mask and we social distancing, and how we can tell people that as soon as we have that critical mass of vaccinated persons, you can come and have more freedom. We've been doing some work, but we also have been looking at airlines and they have been talking to the ELIF committee and the, the chairman and his team, they've been talking to airlines. And some of the airlines, they just book people and they bring them in, the people have to book their own accommodation, their tours, etc. Some of the airlines, they do packages. So they give you the flight, they give you the accommodation, they give you the tours, they give you everything. Now, if they're going to give you the accommodation, um, you know, as a part of a package, then they must have the hotel room stock. And one of the major factors that that airline said they could not consider us at this time is because we did not have enough room stock. But we hastily um, want to assure them that it is getting there quickly. It is getting there really fast. And... Um, by the time we can talk about full load factor, we expect that to happen. My dear brothers and sisters, we welcome investors. And I say welcome, not just welcome them into Grenada, but we welcome people this, the idea of investing. So while we welcome Mr. Suri and a number of other uh, investors who have come from abo abroad, we welcome local investors and the conditions are the same across the board for the size of the investment. Because sometimes people say to me, oh, you give others this and that. You can get the same if you do the size of the investment because that matters. So I look forward to seeing more of these room, rooms. I look forward to getting my job back. I have been working more paperwork, meetings on, on, on Zoom or whatever you call it, speaking to people from a distance, I look forward to meeting people, to going out to these facilities. Mr. Suri, I look forward to this new addition to our room stock and all of what you promised. And I look forward to investors, local and foreigners, building our industry to where we can have the leverage to make some calls and make some demands and make this tourism industry grow. I thank you. Thank you, Minister. Um, I got my vaccine, and I'm due to get my second one in a few weeks, and I hope you all are due to get your second one as well, or at least your first one. So I stand to, to join Minister in that we have to get vaccinated so we can open back our industry, not just tourism, it's all the industries. We just need to get back. I now, with pleasure, invite, while I wait, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize our Ambassador George Cohen, and his wife, Martine Cohen. Mr. Cohen is our ambassador in Geneva. <laughs> With pleasure, I now invite Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada, to deliver our address, to deliver a feature address. Thank you, Sister Chairperson. To my colleague ministers, and specifically the Minister of Tourism. Brothers, Nagib, I can't, I don't like Sararia, like Nagib. Nagib. All my distinguished friends, I think the protocol has been observed, but specifically, even before I was advised, I wanted to recognize George Cohen and his wife. Calivinia Island fame. I have a something more to say about that, but after I finish talk about this man. <laughs> Friends, I think we have heard a lot from Nagib and the Minister of Tourism about the importance of this project and what it means for development of the country and other things. So a lot of times like this, when this has been done, I try to do, give more personal stories of how things came about. 
And I just wanted to tell you how I got to meet Nagim. And sometimes things happen strangely in life. It was soon after the general elections in 2013. I had to travel off to New York to deal with a civil matter on a business in New York. So I informed the judge that I'll do so immediately after the general elections in Grenada. So I traveled up to New York and after just taking the oath of prime minister, not even formation of the cabinet. So I was in New York for a few days and was getting ready to come back down um, on a flight. And I got a call from Danny Factory, who the Factory family has been a long time friend over the years. I got to know the, the, the sisters, the brothers and son, and the old man himself. So he called me and indicated he wanted to know he has a friend that he wanted to bring to Grenada to look at the possibility of investment. And he wanted to know whether I would be available to meet with them. So I told him I was in New York. Um, and he said, well, if you're in New York, um, we will, we're now in France, I think he said, and we were flying to Miami. So if you want, we can fly to New York on the private jet and to, you just have to fly off to Miami with us and then we take you to Grenada. I say, well, you know, I get a chance to sit in a nice aircraft, <laughs> have a whole row of seat for myself. I could lie down and sleep if I want. I'm going to go on a flight and stick up with people all over around me. So I say, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Flying lighted in New York and of course the Secret Service was there. We went on to Miami. Sorry, Nagib had something to do there and I, we took the flight to Grenada. So we talked a bit, but I proceeded to, after months of a campaign, and the stress really, I was so happy. I had my music set with me. <laughs> and Danny was talking and I got into my music to ride four, three, four hours of that into Grenada. So when he arrived in Grenada, Danny came to me and he said, listen, I have never met a prime minister like this who appeared to be so relaxed and having fun. When even strangers were around, you see, right away, I think I get to like the country already. <laughs> because that is my type of person I like to deal with, and so on. And then he told me, well, that is the first start of the man interest in the country. And therefore, after viewing around, and he started, as Clary said, and he indicated, he started seeing the beauty of this beautiful country and the way people treated him. He was already sold, sold from the top to the bottom and all over in, in that sense. Uh, and I thought this was a very important story. See how things happen. Just by coincidence, a flight, playing music, enjoying myself, someone become interested in what's happening at the country that the person is involved with and the beauty of the people, the beauty of the place, a mixture of all of the above. Nagib has shown when he, gave, when he gives his word, that is it. Many times people indicate all kinds of plans, you see all kinds of drawings, Sometimes I get tired seeing them. And you see nothing after that. But when Nagib says, I want to do this, it is done. So I've always tremendous confidence in whatever Nagib says he's going to do. And his love and feeling for the country has, has been something I, I feel has not been matched easily over the years that I've been involved in the leadership of, 
of the politics of the country. So I, um, I, I do want to make this point, Nagib, that we feel strongly about your love for this country. And you've never asked us for anything more than anyone else have um, indicated that they wish. In addition, while they've shown interest in the CBI program, everything he's done so far has been basically his own resources, not one CBI applicant. Not one CBI applicant. And I make the point, if you are interested in the country and you're interested in the development of the country, you ought to make some direct contributions from your own resources other than that of CBI application and the resources that come to CBI. Sometimes I get the impression that some people would want to have all the resources and investment from the CBI application, but to me, any one of us can do that. If every investment you make, every initiative you make come from the CBI applications, the granting of our passport, which of course is a special entity. It has to be more than that. So we have indicated that you have to invest 20% of the cost as part of your own contribution. And we have stuck to this. And I have stuck to this despite the fact that some, some wish to have every single part of the cost coming from CBI application. So I, I'm saying this to say, Nagib has put his money where his mouth has been. <laughs> Colleagues in addition, I believe I want to just make a point to reinforce the issue of this necessity for vaccination. I don't ever stand on a platform in this day and age and not make this point. And I, I want to thank Nagib for underscoring this in a very practical way. And I honestly believe that not enough of our people are speaking out enough on the issue of vaccination, on the issue of protection of what we have here. Because with the beauty of the country well known and, and well articulated by, by Nagib and others, interest in the country's development, the beauty of the people, the beauty of the country, added to that with all the positive we're getting from the fact that our infection rate is very low, all these attractions for the country's success. And therefore we can't, how do we maintain that perception and expand it in terms of real development? It has to be the vaccination. But friends, I'm making this point and this is a good audience and it being streamed live so and people are watching and listening. More of our people need to speak on this issue. Not enough of the private sector is speaking. How can the private sector who has enormous, enormous role to play and has serious investment in the success of business activity appear to be so silent on this matter? It can't be. So I would love to see more of the private sector much more. And the broad sectors of the private sector, not just hoteliers, but all aspects, because the fact of this virus activity is affecting every sector of the business community and the life of the country as a whole. So it cannot be the Minister of Health 
and the prime minister because they see us in a particular light. Politicians speaking. Or the or the, the CMO in the Ministry of Health or the COVID committee and so on. It looks like if we have a specific interest which is isolated from the overall development of the country. We know as politicians and leaders of the country that if the virus has not affected Grenada and remain as the way it is and that we vaccinate and we get this country going and the business expand and people can go about their business the promoters who saw me just recently and others that get back to business and people don't have to pressure us into making personal contributions to them as we have to do right now we benefit a lot so we have a personal interest also in terms of the government but every one of us do similarly i make the point we have concerns in this period where we have a lot of issues facing the country where the government revenue has been reduced considerably and everybody knows it everybody knows it no one has to be an economist to understand that if 50 percent of your any revenue has literally been lost that clearly you cannot be doing the same you cannot be able to do the same thing that you have done you've been doing when you had a hundred percent that it doesn't take an economist or some mathematician or something to understand this and he doesn't care what field of devil you're involved in. This is so fundamental. And that during the needs of so many parts of the societies, of the society that we have um, become so strong, where so many people are out of work, so many people are hurting. And then you have, some will say, that everyone is getting paid. Everyone is getting full salary, even when... The, Everybody was home, 100% salary, even those that have not traveled, called traveling officers, get traveling pay. And we simply say, let's look at postponement of the 2021, because we paid right through. And we, we, we're talking about postponement but as we wait for recovery and that we will commit ourselves as we have to because we signed a document that we will pay you and then you have people in the street I don't understand it it beats me maybe something is wrong with my head that people are how they demanding that you must pay in a time like this and the truth is we're not hearing the people speaking again the politicians is the one speaking why should it be the politician our children's future, in fact, are fundamental. When a parent would go to a class and say, I'm not speaking to the child because my children can tell me, just stay silent. The education of our children becomes secondary. And the politicians alone should speak. And all of us have children and grandchildren. Something is wrong, friends and brothers and sisters. As I said, this thing is being streamed. I mean, talking here, maybe I'm talking to the converted, but I'm talking to the country as a whole. I'm making the point, all of us have a stake in this. People like Nagib have demonstrated that they're serious about expanding opportunities in this country. They see the peace and stability of this country. They will not take their resources and come here even if they find the people nice and there was not peace, harmony and vision of where we're heading they will not be here so I want to thank him again and to say to my brother on California Island I know you like to be first you can't let Kareri Magib pass you like this that is the point I wanted to make when I saw you here I know that I know how you're feeling. I know how you're feeling. And I know my friend, your your left hand on your left side. I know she's listening. <laughs> you 
see what I've done? <laughs> so I'm looking forward to see Brother Cohen with some more initiative and con um, to compete with Nagy because every time you do something, Nagy will want to do something again. <laughs> Friends, I'm so happy to be part of this and I'm so happy to see so many of you here this this morning's exercise and to say we are proud of this little country, we're proud of where we're heading. People are giving us a lot of credit. Let us keep the little country where it is. But all of us need to do it. We by ourselves in government, we are fighting with it um, every day to cope with some of the problems. I go home sometimes after a Zoom meeting, and I'm telling you this, this has been the toughest time for me in politics. I've gone through some tough time in opposition and with all the propaganda and so on, but this is the toughest time psychologically. After a Zoom session and listening to people that never came to, to us to ask for help, literally break down on Zoom session about the inability to meet their family needs. And you see when they come to you, because they're so proud, they can't even watch you. They head down and while they're speaking. It feels me when I go home. It's difficult to sleep. It's tough. So we have to get this country going again. I want to thank all of you for being here this morning. Let's take Grenada forward. What do you say? Forward ever. Forward ever. Back or never. Thank you so much, Prime Minister of Grenada. And guys, you heard it, let's get vaccinated. I don't believe I'm, the persons here need to, but as, as you said, we're streaming. And I've lost a few acquaintances along the way because I chose not to be acquainted with persons who are not vaccinated. So they're getting vaccinated soon. Anyway, let's proceed. Um, we are now going to ask everyone um, to stand and we're going to remove the two tables here, bring them to the side and we'll go down to the bottom area where we would do what we really came here to do. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs>